Good morning, everyone. Uh, delighted to be in uh, Dublin for the conference and, and great to meet you all in the break as well. So I wanted to talk about what we're doing in Scotland to drive the impact of AI and data at a national scale. Um, a bit of background, so the Data Lab is one of eight innovation centres that's been funded by the Scottish Government. So they've funded £120 million into these innovation centres to drive value and growth, economic growth across the country. They are designed around the playbook, and I call it the unholy trinity, of bringing academia, industry and the public sector together to deliver that. And specifically in the Data Lab case, we have £11 million of funding to generate over £100 million of gross value add and 250 high value jobs to Scotland in phase one. So our strategy in terms of doing that is aligned around what we call the three pillars. So everything we do focuses on three key elements. The first one is funding collaborative innovation or projects. So we have money to invest in academics from around Scotland to work in collaboration with the public sector and industry and applying data science methods that will drive significant change in those areas. Secondly, skills. So we have funding to invest in new talent pipelines and also professional development pipelines. And then thirdly, binding that all together, and probably the most important, is developing a strong community across Scotland in this space, bringing those three areas together, but also increasingly internationally. So in this presentation, I'm going to give some quick examples around uh, the three pillars, and also share some of the uh, insights that we've got from running that in the last three years that you could take within your own organisations when developing data-driven innovation. So... Uh, an example of a project, so this is Dylan. Dylan uh, has muscular dystrophy, and for the first time in his life, Dylan has been able to live on his own. And behind Dylan is what's called a fit home. So an organization called Albin Homes um, and Carbon Dynamics have been collaborating to create smart fit homes to allow people with disabilities and the elderly to live independently where they wouldn't normally be able to do that. We've been involved in this project and working with academics to look at how we can forecast or first understand and then forecast the probability of when residents may fall in these properties. And whilst falling is a major health issue, both physically and mentally for people, it's also a great cost to the Scottish economy. So it's estimated that every year it costs the NHS £400 million treating people who have fallen in their houses. So these houses are instrumented with lots of uh, IoT, Obviously, lots of good discussion and research around ethics in this piece as well. Um, and there's a number of projects that we're going to kick off in this area. We're also doing a lot of other stuff on the social side. So we've been working with NHS on predicting when uh, people come into hospitals, what's the likelihood that they will be delayed in discharge. And some of the work we've done there has been adopted by the NHS and has been productized and is currently being rolled out across the country. We've also been working with the third sector and a number of charities, helping them become more data-driven. So we're doing a lot on the social side, but we're also doing a lot across industry. So this is an example of the sectors that we've invested money in academics to collaborate with industry. And to date, we've funded over 70 project across, projects across Scotland in the last three years. Everything from law, we've been funding a, an academic in law and an academic in natural language processing to work with a startup called Amicus. And we're looking to see if we can forecast the outcomes of small uh, claims. And at the moment, a million uh, small claims go unsolved every year because people can't access services or afford to access services. So this is opening up the transparency around the legal system. All the way to large international companies based in Scotland. So Agreco, who are one of the largest providers of temporary power supply, and they supply generators to the likes of the World Cup and the Olympics, We've been funding a, an academic in electrical engineering at Strathclyde to work with them on predictive maintenance algorithms. From that project and adopting those algorithms, Agreco have then secured global investment to create their global machine learning hub in Glasgow. And that's the sort of transformative projects that we're looking to invest in across the country. So moving on to the second pillar of skills. So the lady on the right is uh, Anita, and Anita, was a practicing architect. That's what she studied for and that's what she was doing. Um, but she took some time out to uh, have a family and then really had to think about what she wanted to do next. And she had a passion for helping people with cataract problems. 
And the way she wanted to help people was through data. So she took one of the scholarships that we provide to universities across Scotland, where we paid the whole of her master's fee. She learned data science. We enabled a placement into the NHS, specifically with a cataract team. And then once she finished, she was hired by that team to come and work for them permanently. So she gained her dream job. And Anita is one of 260 students that we sponsored in the last three years across universities in Scotland. And that is a lot of public sector money. And so what we've been doing is creating a programme where we try and remove the friction between the employers that want to hire that skill and the new talent that we're generating. So we do things like the soft skills of CV training, interview training. We run milk rounds where we're bringing those students together with all the organisations in the public sector and industry that want to hire them. But we also do things like design thinking weeks, where, for example, this year we had Heineken, uh, Tesco Bank, ScotRail, the NHS, come with their data challenges. But we don't let the students onto the data to begin with, and they all go out into very cold sweats. So the first two days they're thinking about the problem, understanding it, they're leaving the building and going to interview people at work in these areas. And in the last three days, with that context, they start to examine the data and understand and, uh, and innovate around the data. And then finally, we organise placements for those students. So this year we had 135 students, 78 elected to take a placement in the industry in the public sector, and many of those are offered jobs before they actually leave their placement. So the master's programme is one element of our skills programme. Along the top you can see the new talent funnel, so we also invest in NGDs and PhDs, so we funded 20 of those, co-funded with industry in the public sector, and we also provide advisory, so we don't uh, fund apprenticeships, but we bring our network to bear on how those apprenticeships, graduate apprenticeships, should be structured. We're also working with colleges and schools. Along the bottom layers are a professional development pipeline. So we're investing in online learning, both in terms of being included in master's courses, which allows us to get across the geography of Scotland, but also in the application of data science into specific domains that are important to Scotland. So we all know there are hundreds of data science MOOCs out there. We've been designing courses that are data science applied to games, data science applied to fintech, data science applied to health and social care, stratified medicine. So things that will materially help the workforce in Scotland and beyond. We've partnered internationally with the likes of the Data Incubator to run uh, boot camps for professionals. And one of the new products that we launched a year ago was executive education. So as many of us will appreciate, one of the big barriers to data-driven innovation is actually enabling leaders to understand how they can use data to drive value. So we created a one-day course, and over the last 15 months, we've delivered that to 1,000 people across the country, 160 organisations. And really what we're doing there is providing them both an understanding and demystifying this area, but frameworks to then be able to have the confidence to move on, and linking them into suppliers and people in our network that can help them on that journey. So thirdly, community. So we run the usual type of meetup around the country in various different cities. We were really challenging ourselves here to think about how do we do this at scale? How do we think about catalyzing the discussion and the collaboration around data across Scotland? So we came up with this uh, crazy idea of organizing a festival, using Scotland as a location to run a festival across the country to catalyze that discussion and also promote ourselves internationally. So we launched DataFest a couple of years ago, and this year we had some anchor events, so the usual conference, the milk round, the executive dinner. Um, but the key thing for us around this is we open it up to the entire country. So anyone from academia, industry, public sector, who wants to run an event to promote what they're doing or to collaborate in a hackathon or to debate ethics, they can do that. They can use the platform and we publicize it. So this year we had over 3,000 participants across 50 events in Scotland, from Inverness to Aberdeen, Dundee to Edinburgh, and across to Glasgow and many towns in between. And next year we are running it over two weeks, we've expanded it, so week commence on the 11th of March, um, and we're doing lots of things with school children and women in data science as well. Very welcome to come and visit us and see what's going on there, or if you want to partner and do something in Ireland, very interested in that as well. And that's just one element of our community building programme. So we do the usual meetups, business introductions, lots of them, master classes, etc. One of the really interesting things is the international missions we've been doing. 
So we take data leaders and data scientists out to the likes of Strata New York, but we go to businesses in that local area, so the MasterCard Innovation Center or IBM Watson or UNICEF. And for us, that's really good to build our international network and learn from the best, but also invite them back to Scotland. So a couple of weeks ago, we announced a partnership with UNICEF. We secured funding from the University of Edinburgh and the Scottish Government to set up a global hub for data to benefit children of the world. So we'll be looking at addressing some of the most pressing challenges in Scotland and then working with UNICEF to scale that out. The first challenge is looking at childhood obesity. So how do we do that? Well, we do that with this team. So this is Data Summit this year and they're all on stage. So to deliver all of this, and I've just touched briefly on those elements, we have a team of 24. That team is split across a business development, so a team working around the country, looking at the opportunities that we should be organizing collaborations around. An operations team of project managers and legal who keep us on, on track and all the tricky IP stuff. Um, a team around delivering the skills portfolio, and a team also around data science, where we can work ourselves on proof of concepts. So, some of the things that we've learned along the way uh, as a team to conclude with. So the first thing was, there was a lot of skepticism around this initiative when I started. So I started really at, at the beginning of this. And people said, this unholy trinity can't succeed. We've tried it many times, it's really difficult to do. A lot of pressure for us to build large technical things and be very academic. We resisted that and what we decided to do was start small. We ran a number of different experiments, small masters co cohorts, small projects, small events. And really for us, that was to demonstrate we could deliver value, but more importantly, we could develop trust with those communities. So increasingly, trust with academics, trust with the public sector, trust with industry. And we had the evidence to back it up. In the last year, we've really been focusing on scaling. And so very quickly, we discovered that we are not the people to organize placements across Scotland. We are not the best event managers. We are not the best design thinking people to run a workshop. So really what we've been doing to scale that activity out is identifying the partners that can work with us to do that at national scale. And then thirdly is around measurement and impact stories. So we, as data people, we do not like to measure ourselves. We like to measure everyone else but ourselves. But early in the process, we put a framework in place, and we were using Salesforce to do this, to both track where we're going against our government KPIs, but also our own internal processes, and use that to make us more efficient. In the last six months, we have been through a process to apply for funding for our second phase. And what's become apparent is, Whilst those measurements are key in developing the logic models that enterprise agencies want to see to commit funding, the most powerful thing is telling and sharing stories like I've shared with you today about how it's actually benefiting people's lives, industry, individuals, uh, and others. And so those impact stories are increasingly important for us to get out and publicize. And so on that, we've been using those, and in the last couple of weeks, we've had our second phase of funding signed off by enterprise agencies uh, and the Scottish Funding Council. So as of, of April uh, next year, we'll be going for another five years with another £13 million of funding. So that was really all I wanted to share, but I'm delighted afterwards if anybody wants to chat about the approach that we've taken, a lot of the failures we've had as well and lessons, that if you're trying to start a data initiative within your own company uh, or across the country, more than delighted to share our experience. Thank you very much. Thank you.